The President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, signed a law on the exemption from criminal liability of defendants undergoing military service. Earlier, it was reported that the Russian Federation may send defendants to war in Ukraine. According to online media outlet of Ukraine, Putin's amnesty for accused Russians fighting against Ukraine raises serious concerns about the violation of international law and morality. Russia's decision to send defendants and prisoners, including women as stormtroopers and snipers, to war against Ukraine showcases the country's questionable recruitment tactics. The legislative actions supporting criminals' involvement in the war against Ukraine highlight the ethical dilemma faced by the Russian government in its military operations. The ongoing recruitment of prisoners, including former Wagnerites and individuals convicted of serious crimes like rape, underscores the alarming extent of Russia's military efforts in Ukraine. The law signed by Putin grants amnesty to convicted criminals participating in the war against Ukraine, further emphasizing Russia's murky recruitment strategies and the moral implications of such actions. The law supplements the provisions of the criminal and criminal procedure codes of the Russian Federation. In particular, he orders to release from criminal liability at the stage of the trial the accused who are serving military service during the mobilization period or have entered into a contract for military service. In addition, the law provides for the extension of a similar legal mechanism to convicts for whom a verdict was passed, but it did not acquire legal force, in particular at the stage of appeal proceedings in a criminal case. Recently, information spread in the mass media that the Russian authorities may send about 20,000 defendants who are in pretrial detention centers to war in Ukraine. Russia has been recruiting prisoners since the start of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. After Prigozhin's death, the Russian Guard took up this task, recruiting from Wagnerites. The Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation also recruits women from prisons as stormtroopers and snipers. Recently, the State Duma allowed those convicted of rape to sign contracts for the war against Ukraine. The Israeli military released video on Friday said to show Israeli troops operating in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. The army said in a statement that forces are operating simultaneously on three fronts including Gaza, the West Bank and Lebanon. On Tuesday, Israel began a ground incursion into Lebanon against the Hezbollah militant group, while also conducting strikes in Gaza that killed dozens, including children. The Israeli military said nine soldiers have died in the conflict in southern Lebanon. Israel and Hezbollah have traded fire across the Lebanon border almost daily since the day after Hamas cross-border attack on October 7, 2023, which killed 1,200 Israelis and took 250 others hostage. Israel declared war on the Hamas militant group in the Gaza Strip in response. More than 41,000 Palestinians have been killed in the territory, and just over half the dead have been women and children, according to local health officials. Nearly 2,000 people have been killed in Lebanon since then, most of them since September 23, according to the Lebanese Health Ministry. Typhoon Krathen made landfall Thursday in the major port city of Kaohsiung, bringing torrential rains and fierce winds to southern and southeastern parts of Taiwan, according to weather authorities. Krathen made landfall in the industrial Siagang district of Kaohsiung around 12.40 p.m., the Central Weather Administration said. 
The typhoon packed maximum sustained winds of 126 km per hour near its center, with gusts of 162 km per hour. The typhoon is forecast to move slowly north and weaken into a tropical depression by Friday before it reaches the capital, Taipei. Kaohsiung earlier urged its residents to take cover from potentially disastrous winds. The slow-moving typhoon, which has been inching toward Taiwan at a speed of about 4 km per hour, doused eastern and southern parts of the island over the past five days, forcing thousands to evacuate from mountainous or low-lying areas. Schools and government offices have been shut around the island for two days, and all domestic flights have been cancelled. Gusts and heavy rains pelted the empty streets. Many residents woke up Thursday to mobile phone alerts urging them to take shelter from the potentially dangerous winds. The Weather Administration posted a Facebook message warning Kaohsiung and Pingdong County residents to not go outside when the eye of the storm passes above their area and the weather calms briefly, because the winds and storms will pick up again afterward.